Hello and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to import records from one Airtable base to another. So you may be working with multiple Airtable bases and you might find it necessary to copy records from one base to another. And so this is what I'm going to be teaching you today in this tutorial. So in order to import this data, we will be using the data fetcher extension. So once you arrive back to your Airtable base that we want to copy those records over to, here we're going to add add the data fetcher extension. So over to the top right hand corner, you'll see this extensions option and that will load with the add an extension button. Select this to search for data fetcher and you'll see this search bar in that top right hand corner. So here we're going to search data fetcher like so and it should just pop up nice and simple select the add button and then select add extension. Great, now you can either create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. Now it's time to import our data. So here, if you select this big blue button, create your first request, that will bring you to the following page where you can title your request and we're going to do so as fetch social records. So just up here where it says request one, like so, then for the application, we are going to search for Airtable. Nice. Automatically, this will come up with the Airtable O auth connection from the drop down menu. Leave it like that under authorization and click on the blue button that says authorize. As you can see, this opens up a tab that requests that you authorize data fetcher to access your Airtable account. So you can add the bases that you like. So here I'm going to go ahead and select all current future bases in all current and future workspaces. And I do recommend that you select this one to avoid any unauthorized issues in the future. Then select the grant access button. Fantastic. So as you can see, that says status connected. Then for the end point, we're going to select import all records from a table, that first one, and select save and continue in the bottom right hand corner. Amazing. Now for the base, this is where you are going to choose the Airtable base that you want to import records from. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my base social media calendar and I can do that simply by searching for it just like so. Then for the table, we do want to select calendar. But again, this will be dependent on what your base has in it. Then if you want to, you can import records from just one Airtable view here. This step is optional. I do want to do that. So I'm just going to select my social media calendar view. Then for the output table and view, select the Airtable table and view that you want to import the data into. So here I'm going to go for table one and grid view. That is the default and it might be on yours as well and then select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. Select continue and now we arrive to the response field mapping and this is where you can choose which of the fields you'd like to have imported into your new Airtable base. So here you can turn these fields on and off if you don't want to bring them in just turn them again on by using that green to gray toggle or you can simply select filter all in the right hand corner here to turn them all off and then of of course, you can also use your find field bar. So here you can search for any fields that you would like to include. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how this works by searching for ID. And as you can see, that pops up and I'll take that away again to get back to that main view with the fields here. So if you do have lots of fields, this is a really useful tool. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fields post topic, fields copy, fields status, and I'm going to make sure that this field status is mapped to a single select field. So here we can see that this is mapping to the new field field status it gives it the same title. But just from that drop down menu, I'm going to check that it does map to a single select. As you can see, this is down here. So I'm going to change that. And we're also going to turn on the fields channels. And I'm also going to make sure that this is mapping to a new field, the fields channels exactly like so. 
but I'm going to map this to multiple selects from this drop down menu. So here we can find that there. And I'm also going to add the fields date. As you can see, that automatically has the date option chosen here. Then we're going to select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. And as you can see, these fields are now being created in our table. Select show output table. Amazing. So this is now what appears in our Airtable base. And we can scroll all the way through to see those different options here now. It has all been copied over and it really was as easy as that. Now, if you ever want to make sure any changes are always synced correctly when the data fetcher request is run, you can use any unique field. And obviously that ID field is always going to be unique. So this is the field we're going to use and we want to open up our advanced settings. So back over to that right hand corner, you'll see this extensions option. If you click that again, it's automatically going to bring you back to what you've already created here in data fetcher. And you can see that request here that fetch social records. So as you can see, this has all of those settings that we've already inputted for this request. So we're going to scroll down to the advanced settings here, open those up and look for update based on field. So just here, it says update based on field, and we're going to change this to that ID option so that we can continue to sync up the records between the two Airtable bases based on this ID field or any unique field that you're using from your own Airtable base. So now that you've done that, you can select the save button in the bottom right hand corner. And if you would like for these records to sync up automatically without you having to do a thing, scroll up a little bit it to find the schedule option for data fetcher. Now this is amazing. It does allow you to keep your records synchronized and up to date on a timer. So if you make any changes, you know that those changes will synchronize as frequently as you wish for them to do so. So this option will only be available like so if you have already upgraded to a paid data fetcher account. If you haven't yet done that, I really recommend that you do so that you never have to worry about rerunning your requests again to keep all of your records up to date. So once you've done that, you can come back to this step and now you should see this schedule option like so. And this has already connected to our Airtable account because we've given that authorization at the beginning. So you don't need to go ahead and authorize this to your Airtable as you otherwise might have to. So as you can see, it's as simple as turning that gray toggle to green and then you can choose how often you would like for this request to run and update your records. So I'm going to leave it like so, and then I'm going to select the save button in the bottom right hand corner and close that window over. So hopefully today you have learned how to import records from one Airtable base to another. But if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com where we also have a full length blog on this exact topic for you to check out there as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.